Hello and welcome to the Grove Church Podcast. I'm Charlie Lofton, the lead pastor there, and we are so glad that you're joining us. Whether you are a member and you're just catching up on a sermon that you missed or you're someone who's brand new, we are really glad that you are joining us. And if you are new in some way, and I know that a lot of people will do that, will listen to sermons first before they visit, I want you to know that we would love to meet you at any point. You can join us live in our services on Sunday, 9 and 1030, or our streaming service at 1030. Either way, we would love to be able to get to know you. And regardless of why you are here uh, listening to this sermon today, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, good morning. Hey, if you are new, I am Charlie, a uh, lead pastor here. Really glad you are worshiping with us today. And as Jason mentioned, we are finishing up our uh, giving series uh, today. And um, there's a story that I like to tell, and if you've been around, you've probably heard it more times than you care to remember, especially if you have a good memory, you probably remember me telling it a lot. But it came to my mind today, um, in part, with kind of with a, with, a different, with a different twist to it, and you know, for, I'll make sure everybody knows, I'll, I'll, I'll tell the whole story. Uh, but it was from my freshman year in college when I was, you know, I grew up going to church, being a very churchy kind of guy, got to college and was just completely planning on walking away from it. My life was just kind of heading in the complete opposite direction, but I couldn't give up going to church because my parents had this like um, attachment thing. They, they, they had this really sneaky, it was a sneaky system. They would say, hey, let's talk every week. Of course, you have to plan these things when you only have corded phones, right? So we planned the talks, like let's talk Sunday at 1.30. And that was very crafty, right? Because they asked two questions, how was your week? And the second one, yeah, how was church? How was church? And I was trying to figure out if I was going to start lying to them or tell them to stop asking. But I decided to go one more time, one more time. I went to a different church. Like the churches I was going to, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't like church. I was like, I was trying a completely different sort of church. Found it in the yellow pages, in case you're wondering how old I am. I'm yellow pages old, and I go to this, I go to this church, and, you know, I, f- I feel like I had a, a different experience just in the service, but the really cool thing happened is this really awesome lady next to me during what they called the, you know, meet and greet time, which I'd never even heard of before, um, introduces herself to me, finds out I'm a college student, and connects me with this guy who was going to lead a Bible study in my dorm on my campus, And I talk about the power of that story. I mean, this guy, Steve, he was an incredible mentor for me all throughout college and still is. And my my, my meeting him was kind of this transformational life change moment for me because of him just kind of really helping me fully and more deeply understand who Jesus is and what he wants from me and how I can rightly relate to him. It was this life-altering relationship that I have with him, but it's not just him. Like, he gets the credit, right, for being this mentor for me but then this lady Bev I mean it was it was her act it was her act of kindness and and willingness to kind of just show a little bit of extra friendliness to a young college student I mean it was her act that changed my life and so I like to talk about it like it's not just Steve it's her but here's the thing that I was thinking about this week what about all of the people that were a part of fellowship Bible Church Conway at the time who, um, who were just giving to this church. And by, and by them giving generously to their church, this church existed so that they could have this service, so that I could even sit next to Bev, so that I could even meet Steve. And Steve works for this missions organization where he's raising his personal support, where you know basically his salary comes from the personal fundraising he does. What about all of the people that were on his, his support team? Every person who gave one dollar to Steve or supported Fellowship Bible Church Conway, every one of them has a stake in this life-changing, life-altering moment that changed my trajectory, my family's trajectory. Every one of them has a piece in it because their faithfulness to give a moment like that was able to happen. And even though... I would say almost none of them, apart from Bev and Steve, even are aware of this story. Every one of them has a share, has a claim to it. Because the idea, this is the thing I want, to, I want you to hear this, I'm going to say it multiple times in a lot of different ways, is that generosity, it travels. 
when you are generous, when you give, it has this impact, that just, a kind of this unlimited kind of impact that it can have and in ways that we, we, we will probably never know while we live here and that someday will be revealed to us all of the different impact that your giving had that you weren't even aware of. And so we talked about this. We kind, of, we kind of call this series the domino effect. In my mind, this is kind of the last domino that just kind of spreads out incredibly. If I were to say to you that you can make a real difference and impact in this world that so many of us wish that we could, you would say, well, I'm just a person. I'm just, I'm just me. But simple acts of service, of kindness, simple acts of giving have this sort of world-changing impact. And I think that is the thing that we want. We want to be able to look back and say that our lives mattered, and giving can be a huge vehicle for that. But take a few steps back, make sure we understand how we got here. That first real domino that has to happen is that if we really want to see just the, this incredible multiplying impact, that our giving can have on our lives and in the world. It starts with this first one we talked about two weeks ago. we gotta get, we got to get this issue right between us and God. We've got to make sure that I'm being faithful to what it is that God has called me to do. A lot of us are wanting blessing and we're wanting God's favor, but we got to get right with God first. And what God has said is that the first tenth, the first part of what he has given you belongs back to him. And too often I think that we make this an issue between us and the church or between us and this church or between us and people who ask for money. But really the first domino is not between you and any particular church or any particular organization. But do I want to be be right with God? Because the next domino that falls from being right with God is his blessing, his favor. And we looked at this passage in 2 Corinthians 9 that we get into this kind of blessing cycle with God. That if I'm faithful with what he's called me to do and I become a generous, cheerful giver, then what happens is, it says that God is going to bless me, but he's going to bless me in a way that allows me to continue to be generous. He's going to bless, I'm going to be generous, he's going to bless me, and he's going to bless me so I can be generous. And this is kind of this overwhelming kind of cascading favor and blessing from God on my finances and on my life happens when we're generous. And so continuing on with this passage, so we got this first time, like I'm going to get right with God, and then I'm going to experience his blessing and his favor And then Paul continues in the exact same passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 12. This service that you perform, let's make sure we're talking about, he's talking about their generosity. He is sending some people here to the Corinthians to gather some money for a a mission project that they have, where people are both in financial and spiritual need, and he's gathering up this money to go so he can do this new mission. And so he's talking about this in particular, that this service, this thing that you're doing, this, this act of generosity for these people is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Now verse 12, to go back here to this very first verse, in verse 12 it says, This service that you perform, this generosity, it's not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. It's like, hey, you're giving to us. It is making sure that we have what we need to do the things that God has called us to. Your giving is supplying our needs, which is great. But it is not simply doing that. By you giving, not only are we able to have these needs met, but it is having this further result of an overflow, an overflow of expressions of thanks. Because of what you're doing for us, it allows us to do this thing with them that allows them to be incredibly thankful for the thing that God is doing and for your generosity. 
And so he uses overflowing, this kind of rippling, this water metaphor. We've been using a domino metaphor over the last few weeks, but let's just say it explicitly here. Giving has a domino effect. It has a domino effect. When you give to someone, when you give to a church, when you give to a ministry, it has a multiplying effect. You're not just simply, they weren't just simply giving to Paul so that Paul and his team could go do this thing that God had called them. They were giving to Paul, and because they were able to do this thing, now these incredible things are happening through the ministry of Paul. So they're giving to Paul, but really they're giving to all of these people, and they're going to have all of this impact right over here. And, and, I, and, I, and I hope, this is the thing that I want, like more than anything, as, you, as we think about today and, and, and what I really hope that God will impress on your heart. And I hope that you will choose to believe and really think about just this kind of incredible overflowing, use his word, domino effect, this overflowing impact that simple acts of generosity can have. I think sometimes we, 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 we limit it to a, to a certain moment, to a certain one thing. I'm giving to this one thing, and we don't think about these kind of huge layered impacts. And so one ministry, that we're, we're going to spend some time today talking about a few different ministries and missions that we support. And we're gonna, we've, got, we've asked for videos from a lot of different people that we support. And we're going to be watching and be able to see those over the next several weeks, both online and here on Sunday. Because I want you to feel more connected to this. I want you to understand and believe and just kind of be able to connect with the idea of kind of how you're giving this overflowing domino effect that it has. But the first one that always comes to my mind, and I referenced it a couple of weeks ago, and I just want to mention it again, is this incredible ministry called The Call. And it is a, it is a ministry that is um, encouraging Christians to be more involved in foster, the foster care system, both in fostering and adopting. And it is, and, and again, this is, this, is, this is awkward not for me, but for her. But I have mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about it, just kind of how God used the moment when I first heard about this ministry. It's our very first Sunday on staff with Fellowship Bible Church in Little Rock when this ministry was launched in Little Rock. And I got to see uh, uh, someone that I went to high school with launch this incredible ministry for who I still don't know why she's here today, which is incredible, the impact that that moment had in, in not, not, not just in that church, but in my life that has just kind of spread out. It was, it was a first domino, right? And very thankful for Mary Carol and so glad that she's here. And this impact that this ministry has had on our family, ultimately our church and everyone. So we, we give to this thing. You're, we give to it personally. Our church, we support this ministry financially here in northwest Arkansas. And because you do this, kind of at its simplest, at its simplest, it allows them to have staff here. It allows them to have staff. And so they have staff, and they're able to have facilities and have all these supplies and all these resources. And so we pay so that they can, ha- so they, they can kind of function. I, but I think if you think, man, we give to the call, you know, it's, you, I think you instinctively know that it is more than helping pay their rent and their staff salaries. Because what they're doing, the impact of what they're having is encouraging more and more families to take in and to love these kids who find themselves in the worst situations anyone can find themselves in, not by any fault of their own. And we were heavily involved in this, and as most of you know, we were foster parents for a while and ultimately adopted a a little girl out of foster care 12 years ago. And it has had this huge impact on us. And because of that, there's probably another dozen or so kids that have been adopted from foster care in our church. And probably and hundreds of kids in the foster care system have come here and experienced the love and hope of Jesus and the kindness of God's people in the most desperate moments of their lives. And because of our generosity to them, it has brought awesome new kids into our church. It has allowed us to bless and, and love on hundreds of kids. And these things have generational impact. We have changed the life trajectory 
of dozens, if not hundreds of kids. And that is just one church in northwest Arkansas. We, we have a lot of stories. We have hundreds of stories just in our church. And we're just ones of dozens of churches. And so this faithfulness of giving, you give here, we give to them, and it has this cascading, rippling, generational impact as these kids' lives are changed. And I want you to feel that. I want you to believe that, that when you are giving, it has this huge, rippling impact. And he describes it here. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ. So the first thing he's saying, they're saying because of this thing that you're doing, other people are going to find Jesus. And for your generosity in sharing them with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. When you give, people will find Jesus. God receives their praise. And then ultimately, you're going to receive thanksgiving back. People find Jesus, God receives praise, and you're going to be blessed and thanked. There are people who do not know you by name. That may not even know our church by name. But are incredibly thankful for a ministry, a missionary, a person that has had eternal impact on them and their family. And they're very thankful for them. And they are thankful for all the people who sent them. And that's you. And we may not get to know all of these stories in this life, but I promise you there are countless stories out there of lives being impacted because of your faithfulness and generosity. Two years ago, I was um, speaking to a group of people who, minist- who were college, doing college ministry. They were in Florida doing a, doing a summer project, and I was down there speaking to their staff. And it was, really good. it was a really good time. I was there for four days speaking to a lot of different groups. And after one of them, this girl named Sam, she comes up to me. And she says, you probably, I don't think, I don't know that we've ever met. I just want to introduce myself to you. My name is Sam. I'm like, okay, great. He's like, I went to the University of Arkansas. That's cool. He's like, and I visited, I didn't go to your church when I was there, but I did attend once, which I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I like where this story's going. What do you mean? You come once. You come, 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 I only came once. Like, mm. Anyways, I came, I came once, but I heard really for the first time, I heard you share the gospel. And for the first time ever in my life, it really clicked. And in that moment, I gave my life to Jesus. And you probably didn't know that. Like, I, I absolutely did not know that. And so I just, she just said, I just, I, just wanted to, I just wanted to say thank you to you and your church. And since then, she has been working, uh, doing, you know, she had incredible impact on her campus and went on staff with this missions org and was doing college ministry in Arizona for a few years and then in Wyoming for a little bit. And she has had this kind of multiplying huge impact on college students for years and years to come, in part because in one moment on one Sunday, she was here at a church that you guys give generously to so that we can do what we do. We are able to have an unknown impact in one young college girl named Sam that seven years later, I get to find out the really cool thing that happened. Well, it's probably, it's probably more like eight or nine years later that I finally heard this story. And that's just one story I know. And probably for every story I know, there are dozens more that I don't. Of the thousands of people who have come here at least once, the impact that we have and, and the multiplying impact that, that helping to, to be a part of watching God change someone's life, the rippling impact that that can have in the world. That's what happens when we faithfully give and then we get to have our share, we get to have our part in that and we get to receive the, this, this, this overwhelming thanks that comes for the overflowing of expressions of thanks that in their prayers and their hearts will go out to you. 
because of the grace that God has given us. And so again, like I said, I, I, I want us to feel, I want you to believe, I want you to understand, I want to do a better job. We want to do a better job of helping all of us be more personally connected to the ways that our giving is having impact. And so uh, we've asked, like I said, we've asked some of our missionaries to kind of send us just some videos to introduce themselves. And some friends of ours that it's been 10 years since they were a part of our church because they've been, they've been overseas that long. But rather than me introducing Casey and Mandy Morgan to you, I will let them introduce themselves. Hi, Grove Church. I'm Mandy. This is Casey. We're the Morgans. Um, we have six kids. Only two left still in our house, Lucky and Libby, which the Grove Church had such a big part in their adoption story back in 2013. We spent 10 years living in China and then lived in Fayetteville from 2011 to 2013. During that time, we got to worship and serve with many of you at the Grove Church, and we really loved every minute of our time there. Then the church sent us back to the mission field, and we've spent the last 10 years working in Kenya and now in Southeast Asia. Right. Our work is awesome. We love it. After being frontline missionaries for so long ourselves, um, we now have a ministry called Field Life, which supports the global worker. Yeah, we get to do retreats, fun, adventures, coaching of all kinds on issues that are relevant to missionaries. And we even have a free guest house right on the beach where over 300 global workers and their families from serving in 13 countries and dozens of organizations have come here to rest and refuel uh, in the middle of what oftentimes can be uh, pretty strenuous and difficult uh, fields where they're working. We love the Grove Church. We love and miss you, Charlie and Heidi, and many others who we know and love. We know who you are. Hope to see you soon. Yeah, thank you for all these years. I guess it's been nearly 14 years now support and prayer and encouragement uh, from the church and so many of the families that are there. Um, yeah, we couldn't, we couldn't be doing this without you, so thank you. Yeah, so it's been 10 years since they lived here in Northwest Arkansas, so a lot of you have never met them in person. And they have been in the field doing mission work for over 10 years now, and it's an incredible thing. We, we love them so much, and they were an incredible part of our church, and they were doing some college ministry here, and then encouraging people to be more involved in what God's doing around the world, and then went to Kenya to do the same thing, to encourage Kenyans and Kenyan churches to be more involved in helping bring Jesus to the world, and they did that for a while, and then they moved to Southeast Asia, and were doing that there, and then came up, then started this new ministry, and I want you to kind of just understand this for a second like you give to us that allows us to do church which then allows us to take a significant portion of what we do and we give it away and we give it to people like the Morgans which allows them to do what they're going to do and what are they doing they have a ministry that allows them to do counseling and coaching and encouragement for a lot of other missionaries in that region who need some help and some support and some rest and because you give here, we give to them, and what they do impacts these missionaries, that then those missionaries then are able to go back stronger and more encouraged and better equipped to go to all of these other countries and all of these other communities doing all sorts of incredible things all over the world. So one gift here impacts this family, which impacts their ministry, which impacts hundreds of missionaries, which impacts thousands of people in places all over the world that most of us will never visit. But it is hard for you. Do you believe? Do you understand the impact that you are having in countries all over the world by simple acts of faithfulness and generosity right here? It travels. It has a rippling effect, a domino effect. Pick any metaphor. Pick all of the metaphors. In a couple of weeks, Heidi and I and Layla, along with several other people from the church, it's going to be, it's going to be an, an, an awesome time. Mark is coming. The, uh, Brad and Mel Alexander are coming. We have the opportunity to go to Thailand for, for a week 
where we're essentially helping to put on a training conference for this group of staff from another country in Southeast Asia. And it is partly your support that is allowing us to be able to do this. What are we doing? Well, we're going over there to a group of people who live in a very hard place, ministering to a very difficult group of people. And we're able to go over there and we're going to be able to provide them encouragement, training in what they're doing, be able to love on them, to help them do marriage checkups for some of them. Um, some of our kids and some college students from our church are going to be going over there to provide child care, to love on their kids. Brad is going to lead us in a worship night. They're going to be giving them some training and some business development that they need to do. And because of that time, these 30 or so families that are doing incredible things for God are going to be strengthened and impacted, and they're going to be able to go back and serve, faithful, serve God even more faithfully in what they do. A simple gift here allows us to go on this trip that allows us to have an impact in, in dozens of people's lives that most of you will never meet. And we're going to be able to hang out with Evan and Emily McCall. I don't know if you know them. They're coming to this. And we're going to be able to love and encourage them. And they've been in Thailand for years. Your money, your generosity, your giving, it is traveling all over the world. And there is an overflow of thanks. It is going to happen so many times that all of these different missionaries are going to come up to us at various times and say, thank you so much for coming. It means so much that someone would be willing to get on a plane and travel for whew, 24 hours. It takes 24 hours, plus the, it's actually 27, I think. 27 hours to get there. If anyone would do this, thank you so much for being willing to do this and serving us this way. They're going to thank us personally. I'm thanking you in advance because their thanks extends to you. It extends to everyone who supports what we're doing here. And what God is doing around the world, your, your money, your investment, your generosity, your giving, it is having a rippling impact, a domino effect all over the world. And these are just a small number of stories. We talked about our community care team last week. What is, what is the lasting impact? of being a place where people who would not have otherwise been able to eat or stay in, in their apartment or had any place to sleep at all had we not in their most desperate hour loved them well. What's the impact on that? What is, what is, what is the impact of people who, several people who are, who are doing college ministry who are coming to other students, just like I was, in these huge crossroads of their lives. And we invest in these awesome people who are doing this college ministry and is having this multiplying effect on hundreds, ultimately thousands of college students. Again, and every person you impact, it has a generational change. The legacy of the giving that you have will outlast you. And it will have a ripple effect that you will still be feeling in heaven as some of these thanks that are kind of implied will be coming to us face to face. When people come up to us and thank us for how a moment of generosity had this traveling domino effect that ultimately came to them and God changed their life. I want you to believe this. It has been an incredible part of our family, our family's journey. It's kind of a deep value of Heidi and I from the very beginning that we want to be generous people with our finances, to give generously. Because we understand that it is small, simple acts like that that have incredible worldwide impact. And I, I, want, I want you to have this. I want you to be an investor. That your generosity can have this sort of worldwide impact. And so we mentioned this a couple of weeks that we're going to be launching a, a, a missions campaign between now and the end of the year to kind of raise our missions budget. We have always 
been a generous church giving at least 10, usually between 12 and 15% of what comes in, we give it out. And we're raising kind of this 10% of our operational budget, this $91,000 that is a minimum of what we're going to give away this year to missions and, and community ministries that are doing incredible things in our, in, our, in our town, our community, and our world. And we're going to keep introducing you to more and more of them over the next several weeks. And we want to spend the next few weeks kind of raising this extra money so that you can feel more personally connected to the sort of impact that your giving can have. And if you were here two weeks ago, we kind of did a little intro video kind of anticipating this moment. Um, I want to speak specifically, like I did there, I want to speak specifically to three groups of people. There's some of you who have been coming here for a while and you really kind of haven't taken that first step of giving. You're, you're trying to make some decisions about kind of maybe in your own personal finances or just kind of your, your comfort level with our church. And I think this is a great first step. This is a great way for you to know, hey, by me giving, I'm not only just supporting this thing that we're doing here, but we're helping, we're helping alleviate poverty in our community. We're bringing hope to our community. We're taking Jesus Christ to the campus. We're taking uh, uh, missionaries and sending them out all over the world. We've got great support staff for missionaries that live here and worship here with our church. We're gonna get to, we're gonna get to meet and know them a little bit better. If, if you've never taken that first, this is a great way to do it, to take a first step and say, I know that this money is kind of going to have incredible rippling impact in our world. A second group is people who have maybe taken that first step, but it's, you wouldn't really care, like I'm not really, I, I, I kind of give, but I wouldn't say it is, it's a passion. I've really certainly haven't gotten to a, to a tithing level of like just a regular generous giver. And often that comes from some sort of hesitation, some check that you may have. And I want you to know and believe that an investment here at the Grove, it's not just simply to keep the lights on here. It is having this huge impact. So I would encourage you to take a step forward of faith to become a more regular, generous giver. And then the third group, and this is something that has been really important to Heidi and I for years and years. We'll call it kind of a plus one giver. We give on a regular basis. We, 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 we is a, a regular part of what we do. But then you'll find yourself, you get invited to a banquet. You find yourself getting invited to lots of different things where you're kind of giving above and beyond. I would encourage you to take that step because I'm a big believer. When you start talking about generous, it's that, it's that plus one beyond kind of what this regular thing that you commit to, this extra thing. There's, there's, I, I really do. We've experienced just that some of the, the greatest blessing comes from that next little bit. And so I would just encourage everyone to be a part of this. I want everyone to experience this overflow of gratitude that God is talking about here. And that because what you'll experience, what is it, how Paul wraps it up, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This thing that you get to be a part of is an incredible gift from God. It far surpasses the anxiety and the fear and the uncertainty that we have around our finances. God brings peace, He brings joy, He brings His favor, He brings His blessing. And the overflow of thanks and blessing that comes from knowing the impact that your money is having is an indescribable gift from God. And so our hope and our prayer as we're raising this $91,000, that, that everyone here can be a part of that and bringing the hope and life of Jesus Christ to a world that's desperate for it. Let me pray. God, thank you. Thank you for the indescribable gift that God, a simple act of generosity is bringing, bringing hope and life to kids in desperate situations. That is bringing 
food security, home security, to people who don't have it, that is bringing hope and life to college students who are in the biggest transition of their lives, and that is bringing the hope and life of Jesus to parts of the world that we will never see. And God, I pray that we will believe it. I pray, God, that, 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 that generosity will be a way that we could all be described. That we are generous with our finances, finances and we are investors in the work that you are doing in our community and around the world. So, God, all the hang-ups, all the uncertainty, all the things that keep us on the sidelines, God, I pray that you would break those things today. And allow us to experience indescribable gift of the blessing that comes from generosity. And as always, we're thankful for your son, Jesus, whose sacrifice makes all this possible. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us on our sermon podcast. And you can learn more about us at thegrovechurch.org. And if you go to thegrovechurch.org slash connect, there's a form you could fill out. Just let us know that you've been listening. And if you want to dig deeper on some of these topics that we cover in our sermon podcast or just in other issues of dealing with culture or theology, those kinds of things, uh, you can check out our Cultivate podcast, which is on the same feed, um, however you found this particular podcast. So again, this is Charlie, the lead pastor at The Grove, and thank you so much for joining us.